Hello and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. Technological innovations have greatly shaped agriculture throughout time. Crop farming around the world is undergoing a profound technological transition and this rings true for Rwanda as well. On this episode, we focus on how technology is being integrated into the agriculture sector. You will be with me, Fiona Muthoni Nariengwa. The small-scale subsistence farmer produces most of the food consumed globally, largely on small plots of land, using their hands and traditional practices, especially in Asia and Africa. While the agriculture industry has been shaped by the evolution of technology, the change has barely touched the small-scale subsistence farmers in Africa. We are a small country. Most of the farmers are not educated. They are not well skilled with the field of farming or doing agriculture. There's climate change, there's global warming, there's changes every time. So for Rwanda, th th there are a lot of challenges for farmers that we are facing every day. The inputs have gone high when you look at the price of fertilizer, chemicals, seed. The small-scale farmer contributes significantly to Rwanda's agriculture industry, making them an integral champion of growth and socio-economic development. While the challenges facing them pose a direct threat to the food systems and security in Rwanda, they have also opened doors to new opportunities for startups in the agro-tech sector. People don't have much food and the main problem in this world is food. Now we wanted to solve this problem using technology. The CEO of STS, 57-year-old Nzitonda Kiego, began his quest for solving the food scarcity problem in Rwanda over a decade ago. His vision? to empower his people to help others. The vision of STS is to build industries from organized young people. And the industry you cannot do yourself. You have to train people. There, that was uh, uh, my strategy, to train people. In 2015, now we, we started company. Now, I regroup student. I regroup student who with mind of start industries after finishing uh, after graduation. We started as young engineers uh, who were doing engineering uh, as as a course. So we thought how we can use our engineering background to make uh, innovative technologies that can support uh, Farmers. After being introduced to the Internet of Things technology in 2017, the STS co-founders kick-started the foundation of their own patent designs for two homegrown, low-cost agrotech devices. In 2019, we did our pilot phase in the National Irrigation Scheme with the support from the Ministry of Agriculture in about 200 hectares. So it's where we tested our product and we had a recommendation from RAB uh, for the performance of our products. That's when we, we went on approaching other farmers. That's when we reached here uh, in 2020 proposing our products and through Fonergua they received the funds. Uh, currently we have uh, two products in agriculture. One is called the Baza Farm, uh, which literally means ask the farm, and another one is called the Rinda Farm, which literally means protect the farm. A remote condition monitoring and guidance system, the Baza Farm device, assists farmers to deploy precision farming methods. Uh, this Baza Farm device, uh, it is solar powered as you can see. 
It has a electronic components in this box, uh, which is capable to transmit the data online. And in, with, from this box, we have a sensor in this pipe with the, that goes in the soil, in the root zone of the crops. So it is always monitoring the water content. Uh, we are gathering data from the farm and the data are sent to the cloud, to the internet. So from there, farmers are accessing the information on their mobile phones or if for those with the computer, they can access the information on the computer. So in case there is an urgency required like a notification for irrigation, they receive a message on their phone and they respond accordingly. Uh, the whole technology is called Internet of Things. The way how the devices communicate, how the crops communicate with us through browser farm devices. Yeah. Available in Kenya Rwanda as well as English, the information is accessed via a web platform which holds real-time data about the farm. This is a dashboard of the farm. And the way farmers access it is, is they log in with their credentials. I uh, will log in with mine. Uh, after logging in, you see the dashboard showing all the data coming from the electric from Kagitumba. You can directly see it on the profile of the owner of the farm. For me, I'm seeing all the sections in the Kagitumba irrigation scheme. Uh, the moisture is 21, uh, the temperature is 20 in the soil, and the electric conductivity, you can see the device and the power is 100%. So because the, the moisture is below the threshold, that's why it is showing the, it's bad, then farmers know they, they receive a, a notification that they have to irrigate. I technology changwa se, I smart irrigation ni watu uzaniye, ya tumye tu da se sagura mazi, kuko mbere muhinzi yasabaga amazi kandi adakenewe bityo bituma nikijyanye n'amashanyarazi dutakaza amashanyarazi makeya yagendaga ku mazi twakoreshaga nkuba mu mwiko operative yacu cyangwa se uyu muryango wacu bakoresha amazi hano ka gitumba dufite abanyamuryango 1536 buhirirwa n'izi center pivot ariko by'umwe hariko iyi technology ikore ikorerwa kubuso bungana na hegitari mirongo irindwi igice cya se n'igice cya cyo muri a umusaro wari yongereye we na nange ni hereye ho ndi ni umuhinzi ubu ngo kuri hegitari imbere navanagaho toni eshanu ari ku ngo bigeze muri toni esheshatu n'igice while some farmers have readily accepted the use of technology in improving their yield Others have been apprehensive towards the change. One main thing is education, because many of the farmers have not yet uh, have not gone through the education process. So it is it's it's not easy like to convince them to use the technologies. But with the support of the government, uh, people I mean farmers are, are starting like to to know the technology is helpful, and uh, when installing these technologies. It's better as we've done to, uh, to, to give training to the farmers, uh, to show them the use and how to use it and its importance to the farmers. Technology itself, it has power to change the old practices in farming and to help farmers of today becoming the best farmers for the future. Futuristic yet simple. Another SES device being used by farmers in Rwanda is the Rinda Farm. Rinda Farm is a solar trap. Uh, it has a, it has a lamp, a traveled lamp that turns on at the at evening and turns off in, in the midnight. So it attracts pests and captures it in the basin with a fraud, chemical fraud. So by reducing the, the pests that enter the farm, the, it helps farmers reduce the how many times they have been spraying pests in their farms. In terms of saving, it, they have saved much uh, because uh, in the last time they said it has, like they have been spraying like four times a season and now they are spraying less than two. Reducing the cost to small-scale farmers and improving production, currently the STS farm devices are being used by over 120 farmers covering 70 hectares of land in Kajitumba, the eastern part of Rwanda. 
cyatoranye cyaringanirijwe guhingamo ibigori ndetse na soya muri sezo zitandukanye baze ako navukiye hano hafi duhinga sibye ko uko iterambere igenda ritwegera niko tugenda turushaho no kwaguka mu buhinzi i technology batwegere batwegereje idu iri kudufasha kumenya ifumbira ubutaka bwacu bukeneye eh rona ko harimo na no buryo bwo bwo kuhira imyaka banadufasha kubona amazi yo biri ngombwa yakenewe mu butaka eh no buryo bubiri rero hari uburyo bwo kumenya ayo makuru ubutaka yo amazi ubutaka bukeneye ndetse nifumbire akaba hari no bundi buryo burinda ibihingwa byacu kuba bya kwangizwa nibyo nyi koje gatuna hora nibindi bazo ugasanga turi gutera imiti iduhenze ibihingwa byacu ariko hano dufite badukoreye uburyo ibihingwa byacu birindwa ibyo nyi binyuze mu kubirinda nyine bakoresheje application ya Linda Farm Beyond real-time condition monitoring and pest protection, the STS group is now looking at adding another feature to their services to connect all stakeholders of the farm on one platform. Now, if we have those information, sometimes there is someone who is abroad. He wants to invest here in Rwanda or in Africa, anywhere. He wants to invest, but he don't have time to go to visit every time because uh, agriculture you have to visit. Those information will support him or will support him to go in deep and know what he can invest in that business. The Baza Farm Software we are including a platform to make the farmers meet their other stakeholders like uh, insurance companies, banks and other institutions so that they, are, they approach them uh, within the same software uh, and this will help them to get a good market for their products and uh, as well as the input agro dealers they will be able to get uh, the inputs at, at place in the same platform that's what we are trying to push in Baza Farm. By connecting the farmer and his land directly to the buyer and the investor has the potential to greatly catalyze trade and production in agriculture, something the densely populated nation of Rwanda requires to meet their growing demands. They are saying people will increase three times. And uh, today, one family with 80 people cannot support them with uh, its hand only. We need the machine. We need the... Uh, uh, nutrient to put in uh, in crops. We need uh, water for uh, today uh, climate change. Uh, we need investors, and we need information because sometimes uh, people are losing opportunity because they don't have information. Now this support is uh, so much for uh, today agriculture. Agriculture contributes like 30% on the GDP, so it's a, a, big, a big sector that you have to invest in. And uh, one of it is like uh, going for precision agriculture, like applying the agriculture inputs efficiently so that we get the big, I mean, we increase the quantity of production as well as we are reducing the expenses. That's why we are entering the phase of uh, agriculture, pre precision agriculture. That brings us to the end of today's episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Thank you so much for tuning in.